Welcome everybody to Rob's Metalworks. We are here continuing to break in this crazy year 2021 with our second interview of the year. And we are endearing the dark arts of black metal tonight. Brings me great pleasure to welcome the band from Austin called Bruca. And I have with me Misery and Rosar here in the studio tonight. Gentlemen, how are you guys doing? Thanks for having us, man. We're doing uh, good. We're doing good. A little hungover. <laughs> uh, great to uh, have you guys here. And it was great, you know, chatting before we started rolling about all things metal and, and Austin and this crazy time period that we're living in. Uh, but tonight, you know, there's going to be a lot of people who are going to be introduced to Bruca for the first time. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the beginnings of the band. But... I want to talk a little bit before I kind of jump into the details. I want to kind of jump into like, uh, first of all, kind of like Austin and, and black metal, because I was telling you guys, I don't get a lot of bands from Austin. I mean, some, but not a whole bunch um, who uh, come on the program or I get to hear a lot of their music. So share a little bit, and trust me, I'm a veteran of the Austin scene too, because I used to go up there and do a lot of work uh, before the pandemic. What's, what's it like in Austin right now uh, with regards to music and the heavy metal scene? Man, it's a good question. Um, I think all the different genres of music that are being produced in Austin right now, uh, I, man, I don't know. I don't have a good way to answer that question. That's a hard one. You stumped me. Do you so, feel like, do you feel positive about it or do you kind of feel like? I, I really don't pay attention to a lot of other bands except for the ones in my direct local scene. I mean, I love, I, I grew up, I grew up in Austin and I play with a lot of these bands, Cleaver, uh, David mm -hmm. Muchado and, and Cerebral De Desecration. Yep. Um, some amazing musicians. Uh, and, and most of those musicians I just mentioned, they're not actually from Austin. Uh, a lot of the the real heavy metal scene in Austin, I don't really think comes from Austin. It's been a long time. Uh, three, uh, he killed three. Yep. Um, yep. Like, like it's it's been a long time that I can think of. There, there, there still are some good acts. Um, there are, but there's a few. You know, there's not as I don't think there's as I don't think there's as much black metal there than there is in San Antonio. Right. You right. Know, so. Uh, but I, it's going to get better. It's getting better. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, yeah. Um, yeah, I wish we could talk more about it. You know what I mean? But I, it, there's, it's going to come around. I'm there, sure. uh, you know, I know that, like, the, the guys from Come and Take It, um, first promotions, then the venue, have kind of really been working hard to kind of muster up the, the heavy metal scene. I know that before the pandemic, when I was going out to shows out there, um, people were coming out and supporting uh, the bands, the national bands that were going through there. So I know the fans are there, but I guess, you know, like you were saying, what I was really talking about was like the scene, the musicians um, from Austin that are doing metal. And it kind of seems like at least I don't hear a lot about that anymore. Yeah, there's a reason That's for true. that. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's kind of scarce. It really yeah. is now. And you know what? Now that hopefully there's going to be a resurgence of that pretty soon. And, uh, they have metal acts, but they're not black metal. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Uh, they, I, I feel like it's a lot of uh, stoner doom metal yeah, bands yeah. and stuff, you know, yeah. and, uh, which is great, you know. Um, but, yeah, sadly, not enough black metal. A friend of mine was talking to me about uh, an Austin band not too long ago called, called Duel. And so I said, yeah, let me, let me hear them. And it was that stoner doomy stuff, and it, which seems to be really prevalent now. Um, okay, well, I guess that kind of leads me into my segue of, of you guys um, obviously love heavy metal. You're musicians. You're doing your thing. Um, why, why, did you, why are you guys doing black metal? And I have, I've always loved black metal because just like I said in my introduction, you know, the dark art of black metal. Because to me, when you do black metal, there's just so much involved with it. The, the visual, the, the, you know, the... the, the imagery the darkness of it and uh what what kind of has attracted to you uh, attracted you to that kind of style of metal every aspect of it since yeah. i was a little kid really yeah um Go I, I love all of it you know what i mean and even if um even the nerdy bits of it i love it 
You know what I mean? Some people think coarse paint is silly. Still, I, I, I think it's great. Yeah. I think it's, it's amazing. You know what I mean? And, uh, I mean, I, I, we were trying to aim for darker music, you know, and something really brutal. Um, and so I guess black metal is just, the, I mean, that's the genre I've, I, I'm only going to be in, I think, you know, I, I mean, it's, it's one of my loves, man, you know, and, uh, I'm glad they're on board with it and he's, he's pretty black metal himself. And, uh, <laughs> you know, he's, uh, it's, it's been good, but that's, I think that's the only route we're going to take. Yeah. I don't see us doing anything else. Yeah. That's great. Um, you know, I've seen some pictures of you guys and I saw some live video of you guys on social media and you guys kind of go all out with the, the spikes and the, and the, the look, the paint, uh, at your first performance. So it looked great. Thank you. It looked great. Like you were really trying to personify like this and represent black metal in, in the scene. Uh, I mean, I, I got to say. I, go for it. This is who we are, man. Uh, he just told you, like, he grew up on black metal. It's, it's, what, it's everything that was pumped into him as a meat grinder that shits out into this world. Uh, and me, I, I was denied that opportunity being from Texas, being from Austin. I was denied because that's European music. Yeah. And in the 90s, that was so evil with what was going on that, of course, I wasn't going to get a chance as a kid here in Austin, Texas, to be able to hear that. I grew up with Led Zeppelin, Al you know, Allison Ch uh, Steve Ray Vaughan, just uh, the local legends down there, and Pink Floyd. Just the, Those are the things that I got to grow up on. And then, then it was Pantera. And uh, I mean, the first badass band when I was a kid that I heard that I found out was local and I thought they were just fucking epic was the Union Underground. That was yeah. Oh, me. wow. Wow. You know? Brian and, Scott, we love you. Yeah. In the, in the ninth <laughs> grade, man. I, wow. When I heard their song, Turn Me On, Mr. Dead Man, it, it fucking it was something new for me and it inspired something new in me. Uh, I've been getting a lot of inspiration lately. Ever since I really started getting into black metal, it was like just waking up. It was like putting on a pair of pants that actually fucking fit. Yeah. Once. I didn't feel like I was putting on some khakis and going to a job that I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. I felt like this is finally, this is my realm. Yeah. So when we got on stage and we wanted to fucking represent this shit, it, it wasn't very hard for us to say, how are we going to make our course paint look? We already knew, man. It was just, it was already ingrained in us. And when we drew those lines on our face, we fucking owned it. And it, it was just, it was meant to be the whole time. Felt like home. Uh, yeah. we, it's sacred to us. That's, that's our war paint. We're going on stage to do battle. That's how we feel about it. We can't do battle without those spikes. I mean, we're putting on a show, man. And, yeah. You know, and it's, it, you know, I it's mean, also got to be entertaining. Yeah. You know? well, you gotta, we're trying to entertain our fans and you know, we're trying, I mean, this is what we love doing and I mean, we're going to continue to do that. I, you know, we even bought uh, fog machines, but we didn't get to. Oh use them. man, that would have been cool. Um, but yeah, because uh, one of the bands dropped, so everyone was kind of being a little pushed. Oh, for okay, the show. yeah. But you know what? Next time. Yeah. Um, I remember the first time. Uh, you know, I'm a little older than you guys, but I remember the first time, and this was early on in like my teenage years when I heard uh, Celtic Frost, Morbid Tales. Hell yeah. That record. I got the vinyl right over there, sitting in my hell collection yeah. right there. Uh, yeah, and then, you know, as the, you know, the late 90s rolled around and the early 2000s, you know, uh, I remember uh, Demu Borgir when they first came out, um, supported them and loved them and, and dissection and, and uh, you know, we were talking about Immortal earlier. So like all these cool European metal band, black metal bands. Uh, were coming out, and, and I always kind of always loved to the simplicity of it too, the rawness of it, you know. And that's kind of what really grabs you by the boo boo, you know. It's like you're not, you know, you don't really have to overthink it. You just kind of feel, feel it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah you, you mentioned dissection. I gotta say, like when I heard dissection, man, that's the one. John Nesbitt, <laughs> man. That's the uh, guy that committed suicide, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. His guitar work is he's he's a legend. Maybe later on I'll, I'll pull out an old video I have of them. It's oh, in my it's in my ass. collection oh, here. Shit. Yeah, dude. That would blow my. I have it. I have it. I I don't know. I can't quite recall. I haven't seen it in a while, but I ha have it right over there. Yeah. yeah um, wicked oh. stuff like God dethroned and all these crazy bands, man. So, you know, and, and the thing is too, you know, you don't see a whole lot of diversity in black metal. But my thing, and something that I've always shared, regardless of what genre, you know, the band uh, that I'm interviewing does, I'm like, look, as long as you do it well, 
you know, as, as long as you do it well and represent it well, then I'm, I'm down for it, you know, because you're always going to kind of be influenced by, by things that you grew up loving, you know? Yeah, I mean, whether you like that or not, it's, it's ingrained, ingrained in us. Yeah, I play my yeah. music and I can still hear Pink Floyd and Steve Ray Vaughan because that was the first thing my dad bought me as books to learn music with. You know? Yeah. Um, but at the same time, as, as a guitarist, as a musician, I'm not, you know, I love musicians like Yngwie Malmsteen. He can blow people away, can smoke you. But at the end of the day, he doesn't really entertain me. He, does, he doesn't speak to me through his instrument. He's yeah. just a phenomenal musician right uh and i don't think personally that you have to play lightning fast or you know it doesn't matter as long as you can speak to me through your instrument and you can be real if it comes from your core when we play sometimes we're rehearsing it when we're in rehearsals but yeah. when we play live or we're, we're, when we're when we're putting it on for recordings for laying it down we try to bring that emotion. We want to speak through our instruments. We want every time when we, he hates me, but I put him on them. It's just, you can't go out there and fake this shit. No. You can't go out there and fake Not this shit. Not fucking black metal. There's no, no fucking fake. Especially faking. fucking black metal. Yeah. I mean, anything. I yeah, see, yeah. I see actors crumble because they were just acting, and they're good actors. But when it comes down to it, they were faking it. And I see, like, we can sit here and badmouth people all day because, they, you know, they're disgraceful. But, you know, they misrepresent themselves. But not in this. We're, yeah. So uh, let's talk about uh, the name Bruca. What is that? Um, it's just something that literally I was brainstorming and it just popped in my head. And it, and it actually came to mean quite a lot for the band. And uh, <sighs> what is yeah, what, the, show me, Tell me what that is. Um, well, one of the meanings is shame. Which is, which we, we totally accept that. You know what I mean? Like yeah, hu yeah. human shame. Yeah. It's basically what um, we like to think that means. And then um, the, there is here. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, the shame and disgrace. And then the other meaning is, uh, he just you know, had another meaning. a creature <laughs> that has to prey upon other creatures in, it, in order to survive. Yeah. I thought at first it was that, that little satanic little demon on the cover. I said, I didn't know. I was like, wow, is that some That's kind of... actually Baphomet. Oh, okay. I was like, I didn't know if that was a, a different name for um, Baphomet or a different demon or, or I mean, what. Yeah, that, that specifically is a crate of worship. And but it's a crate. Yeah, it's a crate. Yeah. She's building something, right? Like, yeah. Really, but, she, but that is, um, from the artist himself, that's Baphomet. But, but um, the idea is that, you know, you summoned us. Yeah. You, you wanted us. Right. You didn't, we, we didn't. That's why she has the you book wanna, in front yeah. of her. That's, right? Yeah. <laughs> cool. Like to, yeah. We like, we're, to, we're, we, we like to think we're conjuring something with our music. Yeah. You know? Uh, I, I got... We'd like to think Bruca is, and all of us together are, yeah, just a, 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 you know, a demon from hell, you know? I like that it. name. I mean, and, and you know what? And I tell bands this all the fucking time. A band name is... I don't care how good your fucking band is. If you have a shitty band name, you already got, you know, one foot, you know, against you. A, a, a band name is so freaking important. And I remember when I first... When, when he would uh, Rosar sent me the tracks, I was like, Bruca. Wow, that's kind of cool. You know, I can see myself, I'm Bruca, Bruca. You know, and I was like, it just stuck with me. And then the way you guys kind of spell it, too. So, very cool. All yeah, right. You guys like it. I dig it. I dig it. So, uh, let's talk about the, the beginnings of Bruca. Uh, how did you guys get together and form this band? So, originally... Um he well i'll have him talk about that but originally bruca was going to be my solo project that i was just going to do by myself and um you know i i you know i, I also did the logo and stuff and I, you know i'm very proud of it and i and i always wanted bruca to be my band you know what i mean but after, but for a while i didn't know if i wanted to um play with people again right you know what i mean i didn't want to go through all the stress of dealing with a band and uh so had you so on that note had you kind of been in other bands before yes. that Sure, yeah. sure. Were, were those black metal bands too? No, no, I was in a thrash metal band in El Paso. Oh, okay, cool. Which had an awful name. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking and, of names. Uh, yeah, so I'm glad I, I have a good name now. So, and what? Okay. Um, anyways, uh, so then I'll have you take fr from there. Um, he already had his band, you know, and then um, so when, when I joined, we were called Blackhorn. Okay. And then. Uh, Initially, when you guys got together. Yes. Okay. And we didn't know, we didn't really know what direction we were going in. We knew it was going to be heavy metal, 
You know, I'm, I mean, I'm glad it went... Well, I knew what direction I wanted to go in, but I don't... At the time, nobody was on the same page, and then now everyone's on the same page. I feel like everyone's really... I'm glad, you yeah. know, my band's digging what they're doing. I mean, so we're, this, is, this is how it started out. Me and the drummer were working together back in 2009 on a different project. Uh, he bunch of things happened it just wasn't the band that was gonna we, we, we were approaching it a different way um, the wrong way for us the right way for us really but the wrong way for society anyway we tried again with someone else we felt really good and confident about it but that singer that we were with he was just a, a terrible individual at the end yeah and we just couldn't see it he masked it really well um, so we couldn't at, at that point we couldn't continue with him uh, we started again, we were looking to start Blackhorn was what we were working on. And we were recruiting Devin for Blackhorn. And when he came, he was auditioning for Blackhorn. And of all the singers that we looked at for the long period of time that we searched, Devin really shined. He really, he had a voice, he had, and then he had something else. He had a creative vision that was so big, that was so beautiful, that it was worth believing in and backing up. And uh, he came to us as a multi-instrumentalist that could have done his own thing. Yeah. But he saw something. In I was about to ask that. What we were doing with our instruments and how far we, how, how much we wanted it and how far we were willing to go. Uh, and he pushed us. We all pushed ourselves. And in the end, uh, you got Bruca. And at this point, we're not in any hurry to release anything unless we get a chance to push ourselves right. and let the songs take each evolution that they deserve to take to become what they are. And we love it. We, we love every part of it. And uh, I've got a great creative mind I'm working with right now. And I've got an amazing drummer and I've got um, an amazing bassist. Uh, they're I, great guys too. Yeah. They're all great. Good people. Too. They're actually good people and they yep. have a great head on their shoulders and they're, they're, they're fucking yeah they're men you know what i mean they get shit done and like i couldn't have asked for i didn't think this would have ever happen but that's why i was like you know what this is bruca yeah you I know mean, and that's so so um but yeah steven's a huge driving force but you know and uh i wouldn't be here without him of course and he, and um, i'm glad i'm part of this band now nice you know? yeah i mean we're, we're all we still human. everything together we're, you know? we're all still human we all still you're gonna bigger heads. And yeah. shit, you know what I mean? But, but I, would, I, mean, I would love to not... bicker with this guy. I mean, like the shit that <laughs> we, we accomplished we through bickering yell at each other, is epic. You know what I mean? But it's I mean, worth it. But it's, it's definitely it. worth. Yeah, and it's not. Uh, it's not too, anything too bad. We you know push I mean? each but, other. We know what each other's limits are. It, we're not. It's like spotting when you're in a weight gym. You know, you yeah. want everybody to do better. Yeah. That's what we're here to do. We're here to be the best we can be for ourselves, not for anybody else. We don't have to prove it to anybody else. If you wanted to go through like that. We chose you because we love you and we were confident. But we also know once you do it once, you can do it and we can do this. And there is something inside of us and we can bring it out. Yeah, yeah. Well, all of that uh, came to fruition. Uh, and, and thank you for sending me the uh, three song EP. And I remember I messaged, I said, is this a, what's the name of the EP? And it was like, Rob, it's just Bruca. This is kind of like our quote unquote demo but it really it, to me it doesn't sound like a demo it sounds really fucking when i think about a demo i think about something like rough this does not sound rough to me and and i'm no fucking you know i'm a fan but i'm not a black metal expert you know um so i was really happy to get it and like i told i was telling you before the interview um i dug it a lot and i don't get a lot of black metal that i really dig so i was really excited about it and and when I started kind of doing my research for tonight, I remember I keep seeing over and over you guys kind of describing your black metal as grinding, demonic brutality. Kind of where is that stemming from? Our drummer is huge into grind. And you know what? He's not a black metal drummer. You know what I mean? There's, yeah. not a, there's a lot of things about this band that, I mean, we have a lot of death metal elements, of course, you, you know, as you, as you heard. Um, and... We have a, he is, he is, uh, he's not a black metal drummer and it's awesome though. Cause he, he's such a badass, you know, but he can speed. But, so yeah, yeah, he can grind. And, uh, this guy's your demonic force. you know, I think a lot of the black metal sound you're hearing is, yeah. is, is mostly, uh, it's just me and Steven, but, uh, and I'm your beast, uh but you know what, with, with going, going forward though, um, it's, we're all, we're gonna have a lot of, we're gonna, we're trying to do thrash. 
We're gonna have some thrash songs. We're gonna have some songs with D beat in it. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but we're gonna keep it black metal, you yeah. know, as black as we can. And I and um, we're hoping. Well, we know the next next release because we already have it mostly done. Okay. Um, it's it's pretty. It's a lot more black metal. It really is. And the drums have gotten a lot more black metal. Um, so I guess, <laughs> at, but it's it's still a uh, it's still a big mix. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. It's Bruco, you know? Yeah. I, I would like to say that not all the elements we have are necessarily black or death. You know, we do take a lot of that because that is us. But really what we're bringing is power, fury, uh, seductive, demonic yeah, we're not screams trying to copy and violence. We're black metal or anything. We're trying, we're trying to, do to do our, our own, own thing. thing. We're trying to yeah. do, I mean, we're still our... We're still just like a, us and part of our filtration process is does this sound like anything anybody else has ever done? If it does, get rid of it. We don't wanna we don't we don't want that. We we wanna be our own thing. We wanna we wanna split our own. You're Red obviously sea. gonna sound like someone. You yeah. know what I mean? Obviously, I mean people have done everything at this point, but I mean we wanted to sound like us and I we had we, and it it took a while to find us and see exactly tighten in on our you know, home in on our uh on our sound, but this is it. You know, and, yeah. Uh, so you'll be hearing a lot of the same uh, powerful um, shit on the next one. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes, too, when I think about black metal, uh, you know, there's so much like, like I remember, you know, I've seen some black metal bands kind of start off a certain way, really raw. And then they kind of as, as the years go by, will, will transform and they bring in a lot of keys or a lot of that symphonic kind of back end stuff. I mean, it's 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 hidden a little bit behind the guitars. But still, it's there, and it it gives a little bit more of this kind of filling up of, of soundscape for the record or the track. Uh, are, you, are you guys interested in doing any of that? I think we, we might. We haven't do. even had to do that, and we fill the spectrum. Yeah, I, I, I feel yeah. like I feel like we, with it's not about it's, we we want to we want to do no, ask us that do. question I, honestly, right now because we don't know what we want to do and we don't know how it's going to go we we're have so doing much, it we have as so much shit it. planned and i think yeah. you're going to hear intros and stuff so yeah, you'll yeah. hear some like creepy shit you know and some cool uh and i might i might actually do some of that you know um i'm tr there's just some of us aren't into symphonic black metal and uh so I feel like I feel like I'm probably or you like that shit too. I mean, he it doesn't have to like, be like a totally no, symphonic sure. transition. Just might hear a little intro. bit of you might it. Hear yeah. An intro maybe. But yeah. I don't think we're gonna go like the symphonic route. We're just gonna stay metal, man, and just sure. uh, and yeah, you know. Um, I mean, so so the reason we call this a demo more than an EP. Yeah. Is because the original plan was to put four tracks on this and it was going to be one track from each of our four releases that we've kind of already got a really good idea of how they're going to go. We haven't done all the evolutions on the songs, but we've got our back line, our back. We're jumping ahead a lot with we things are. and we're excited about it. You know, we do have, but we do have, um, we have a lot done already too. So, so, so we took these, we, we ended up holding the fourth song, because we thought it was just too powerful. It kind of outweighed these guys. These guys are great. And we wanted to hold something, and we wanted to release the ne this next release that we're working on right now. We want to release it as quickly as possible and have all new content. We want to be able to promise from this forward, you know, all new content on everything. So, sure. so the demo will be standalone. It's three amazing songs from beginning to end. You know, we put our heart into it. It speaks for itself pretty clearly. Yep. And um, the next work, we're going to do just uh, the same thing. Every single fucking song is going to be just as hard hitting. It's going to have just as much love and, and heart in it. And, and I'm, I'm hoping that you're going to be able to feel it and resonate and hatred. the same way. Oh, of course, hatred. Let's, and, let's, uh, you can't have love with and as we talk about, I want to talk a little bit about lyrical content. And as we kind of get into that, let me share uh, the demo with all the people out there who are watching this interview. Everyone, go ahead and take a look at the brand new release from Bruca. It's a three-song EP self-titled titled, uh, demo. You can actually uh, get a hard copy like you see here. And guys, where, where can people download uh this ep from uh bandcamp bandcamp right yeah bandcamp all right so go um, look for it everybody right after you finish watching this interview be sure to check out this brutality if you dig black metal you're gonna love this and i and i love it a lot and like i said earlier one of the things that i loved about it is that it sounds good on my stereo so uh where did you guys record uh this ep um so here i'll, I'll have you talk about it and yeah we did it at come and track it in austin texas with john petrie um 
we, we, she's amazing. He's amazing. It was just, it was really comfortable to go in there and work with him. He's such a professional. He was able to produce a, an atmosphere for us to produce our own atmosphere and yeah. do our own thing. And that's all you could ask from a really good recording. And, and talk about badass bands that be not black metal, but uh, ungrieved. Yeah. That's he, his band is great band. Oh, he's really? Great metal band. Uh, check him out. Yeah. From, uh, you know, Austin. And, uh, he, yeah, he's great. He was great to work with. Honestly, we didn't. Keep the mic right there. We didn't uh, expect to even at first even go in anywhere. It could have been raw. You know what I mean? And, yeah, yeah. And it ended up being so produced because we we ended up. It's a funny story. We ended up getting produced in Russia uh, by the Slaughtered Studios, and this guy's amazing. Wow. What was his name again? Andre. Andre. Andre and his team. He did a fantastic job, and. Uh, we didn't even think we were going to do that at first, you know what I mean? Um, and because he, when we recorded it, it was already honestly like 95% there yeah. sound wise of what we wanted. And so you sent him the tracks and then he mixed them or did something. Yeah. He mixed and mastered them. And well, uh, there was a little story before that we, we tried to mix it locally. It was a nightmare kind of going through people. Yeah. If we have a hard sound to, right. uh, to work with, um, our drummer, I'm sorry, our bassist Oko is from Russia, and he, he's familiar with the underground black metal scene and some of the amazing work that they're able to do for them. And he took our work to them, and right from the get-go, he was making it sound better and better and better, and we knew it was a solid re recording, mixing, mastering right. team to work with. Uh, we would love to continue this formula that we were able to do I think here we're continue with, with yeah, Come and definitely. Track It and Slaughtered Studios, and we definitely recommend both of them. They're amazing. Let's talk about lyrical content now. I remember the, the titles of these tracks are really kind of scary, like uh, Rotting Lust and Eternal Descent um, and Forever Vile. Like these, these songs are like really kind of in the black metal form, and, and I love that too. But, uh, you know, the songs themselves um, are heavy and powerful. And then you kind of you add it, you're adding in all this kind of imagery with, with the lyrical content. Share a little bit, uh, Misery, about what, what uh, you're sharing lyrically uh, with these tracks. I just wanted it to be a huge driving force that kind of just went. I wanted it to match the power that was going with the guitars and the drums. Yeah. And um, it's, it's a lot of hatred it's satan you know what, what are you gonna be you're not a black metal band unless you're a little satanic right? exactly or a lot exactly satanic. let's say that that's why you gotta have and, uh, uh baphomet on the cover yeah man yeah, yeah. of yeah. course and uh and a naked I, chick and we're t yeah imagery uh that, <laughs> yeah that's my buddy curb crawler ghost check him yeah, out go for it um and he is an amazing artist he's one of my favorite artists in the world and i i am i was beyond thrilled that i got to put my logo next to his art yeah and work with him he, I mean, yeah, check out his shit, man. It's a, um, it's Kerr, it's K E R B crawler ghost. Okay. Um, yeah, it's a very cool piece and, of artwork. And I, yeah, I love it. And you know, everyone, everyone loved it. So we, we decided on that and we were kind of going through a lot at first trying to figure it out, but I'm really glad he got back to us. It's kind of like simple, but yet kind of the, the two figures in it are very robust you know what's cool that was not the original he did on a book signing and he just did it on the book yeah and that's the one we picked so he's like i don't have the digital of that so he just redid this whole thing for us wow so um so yeah that's the second version of that picture and it's stuff and yeah i like the simplicity of it um and i like the darkness around it yeah i i i love him man great you know and we'll i hope we could work with him later on in the future too yeah um, so yeah, I mean, you know, um, I wanted to go, you know, fun, like just, I wanted to just throw out some really nasty, hateful shit, you know what I mean? And, uh, I wanted it to be very black metal, very death at the same time, kind of yeah. give it that feel. Cause again, we're not, we're not fully a black, you know, black metal. We have a lot of yep. different elements in there. And, uh, I just, yeah, I just, that's what I was feeling basically. Um, and that's my writing process. I, I hear them out and then I kind of just, uh, we, during practice, you know, I come up with it then and I'll be like, Oh, this is good. There you good. go. You know what I mean? And I, I kind of want it to, uh, I, as go with them as much as possible, you know yeah. what I mean? Cause that way it's just, it just hits harder. Right. Yeah. So that's, that's basically it. Yeah. We talked about, uh, I think before, before we started rolling, we were talking about, uh, the show, your first show that you guys played, uh, earlier this month, like, like what, like a, 
two weeks ago, less than two weeks ago at the Come and Take It. Um, I was privy to see some of the footage uh, from, because it was a live stream. Uh, how, how did that go? How did you feel about the show? It was a little hard, you know, but we're we're determined and we're committed. And yeah. When we signed up for the show, we weren't going to back out. And when we had the support of all the amazing bands that were willing to play with us on our debut, we weren't we weren't going to back out on them. Um, did you guys headline that show? Uh, yes, sir. We did. Yeah, that's what I saw too. That's cool. Uh, it was our debut show. We we have a lot. We, you know, we're shooting for the stars. Yeah. We're, we're going big. We're not going home. We're, we're not. We're not done. We yeah, yeah. A, we got a lot to do. We got a lot to prove, and and we want to share it with you. We want we want people along for the ride. Did the did the performance itself actually go down the way that you wanted to? No technical good. issues. No, no technical everything. issues. Everything felt really good. It was a little rushed, but the sound guy and he, he, Juice up at Come and Take It Live. Yeah, an amazing individual to get to work with. Uh, we got a little it's rushed an and establishment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a great place. Working in establishments like that with great sound and great people, it's it's what makes us be able to be great ourselves we don't have to worry about any of those things we just go up there and fucking kill man yeah it's like a log cabin it's Did, amazing. and like uh we were talking too, like i was sharing with you about some of the protocols now because of the pandemic that fans have to follow at the clubs by you know being seated and and on social distancing and all that stuff they they had those protocols there at the come and take it too yes yeah, yeah. it yeah. was set up so nice that i i felt so the, i felt a lot uh I felt a lot nicer playing the show because at first I was a little skeptical because right. I, I mean it's shit. There's a lot of people. Yeah, you, know you gotta I mean? be careful. But yeah. the, they changed the capacity limit. Um, you know, everyone's wearing masks, um, and it was great. They set up tables. Of course, no one had the mosh pit set. Up. You know, there was the there was no. It was it, everyone was pretty divided. Yeah, you know, up and it was yeah good, keeping a safe distance. Yeah, but at the same time there was a few, there was quite a few people there. Oh, uh, that's cool. Everybody's doing their part to bring it back safely. Yeah, uh, yeah. And that's not just it. Come and take it. That's everywhere. We all want this. We all want music back. This is part of what I mean. Like we're all dreamers, and this is what we need. We we got to have our music, man. Any uh, any other shows planned for this year so far? No, nothing yet. Do you want do you want to do shows more shows this year? There's three reasons we would come out and do a show. The first reason is if we finish the the album, as soon as we're done with it, okay. we will play. To we're going to talk about up. that next. Okay. Yeah. Um, the second reason is if there's enough call. If San Antonio says we want to brook a show, we, yeah, we, we want to fucking brook a show. Brook is going to come. If Mexico City calls us, <laughs> yeah. if fucking Russia calls us, Fuck. we're going to fucking knock down whatever we have to, and we're going to come do it for them. By yeah. The way, I would love playing here. I would. Fucking here in San Antonio? Love playing here. Yeah. Yes. All you promoters who are watching. So, uh, yeah. Uh, and then finally, the last all. reason, uh, we've got some really good friends in a band called Goat Whore. We grew up loving yep. them, and, and uh, it would be an honor to play our next big show with them. And if, it, if that opportunity came up, that would be the third and final reason that we'd be willing to come. Out. You know, my friend T.A. came up to me from Goat Whore, came up to me after the show, and, and he gave me a hug, and he's like, dude, I'm going to make sure, you know, we sure. play with you. And I, yeah. oh man, that was that meant a lot to me, you know. And I hope that happens. That's that would be awesome. We'd Sammy love to, and, we'd love to play with you guys. Sammy and Ben have been in this room, <laughs> chatting no it shit. up. Yeah, fuck yeah, they've been here, and I'm, I'm good friends with them too. So, uh, I go way back with uh, Ben and Sammy, and uh, <laughs> I always get a kick out of hanging with Sammy. Uh, that's great, man. Yeah, that would be cool. That would be a cool ass show, you guys. That would be a really fucking, fucking cool. Fucking cool. Uh, awesome. I hope you guys, uh, I'd love to go see you guys play in person myself, uh, shoot a little video uh, myself and uh, share it with people. Uh, so now let's talk about um, upcoming music. Um, obviously, um, uh, Rosar shared that, you know, these three songs are going to stand alone. So obviously, um, the new, new music that comes out for the band is, is going to be all, all new songs. So uh, is the plan at this point like another three songs or do you guys want to do something bigger no i think we're going to do a full album wow at this point i think that's where it's heading yeah as we have an, uh, we have enough material and Great. uh it's we're probably going to do a concept album nice along the lines of that yeah so obviously you would know since you write the shit yeah that's great man i write the lyrics that's great um can you share a little bit at this point what that might be Obviously, something demonic and evil, but, you know, along uh, any, any, can you just, uh, you know, you have to give me the whole storyline. Just give me a little I mean, bit we, of, so, I mean, little we, teaser. Yeah, we all work together to come up with these ideas, and 
I guess if anybody was going to get to hear the name of our album before we drop it, we could drop it right here, right? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Holy okay. smokes, exclusive for Rob. All right. I All like right. it. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, there. you know, okay, I want a guarantee in life, man. There's no guarantees. Nobody's got your back anymore. It feels like we're out here digging holes for ourselves. It doesn't feel like we're building anything anymore. I just, I, I feel like there's no guarantees out there and, there's only one real guarantee, you know, and it's death. Yeah. You know, and, and I mean, I, there's nothing more black metal than fucking death. And everybody, everybody's fighting for death in one way or another. They want a glorious death. They want to go to Valhalla. They want to fucking battle something. I'm tired of fucking punching buttons. I want to fucking go to war. You know, I want to prove myself. That's what this album. So what it is, is and what I'm going to write is a collection of death and of um, stories about very insane ways to die. And then yeah. well, just different, I mean, just different stories about different people in history and things like that. And um, different um, in, intense, insane ways to die. It's going to be really death metal, you know what I mean? And black metal. Like, I mean, we're going we're gonna to keep it really heavy. Man, and we're, uh, we're also working with an artist right now. And as we're doing these pieces, we're showing him we're creating artwork and he's creating artwork so you've got to i mean what we're doing with this album i drop his name oh uh barisi zotek yeah an so amazing. you're sending like the lyrics and he's reading the lyrics he and reads yeah. he reads coming lyrics. up with yeah. visuals he, he yeah, listens so we're doing a yeah. panel we're gonna have like a i mean it's gonna be a really cool we've setup got we've got big year. plans for this one for every release we're not gonna hold back at all we're gonna give everything we got uh the name of yeah. the album is gonna be death's promise Death's Promise. Nice. And I think, well, I, I don't think I know that, you know, God, you know, in a year where so many people have lost friends and family due to death. I mean, yeah. to death. I mean, it's, I think a lot of people can relate. I mean, I, there is this guy and I, he, he might watch this interview. He's a friend, friend of mine. And his mom passed away and uh, he kind of vented on Facebook today because he, and the way that he vented was like saying, hey, you know, nobody, I'm going to remember who was there for me and who wasn't there for me. Yeah. And it's like sometimes it's people don't don't want to talk about it. You know, we just try to we, we, we get busy with our little lives, you know, whatever it is that we do. And but yet, you know, all these people around us are dying. Yep. And, and some people, you know, some people, you know, I was reminded the other day about how out of nowhere when Kobe Bryant died, you know, and, and people die in various different ways. And you, like you said, you just never fucking know. Such in, an yeah, insane you never accident, know. right? Crazy. So sad. Uh, but death can be beautiful, man. There can be some really good things that come out of, I mean, like not everything that bad, that is, that is bad, you know. And we're going to touch on all that in the yeah. whole thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? This there, is about there's, acceptance. There's good ways to die. About, you know, I would die happily to protect my family, my friends. Yeah. You know, uh, that everything you know you do what you want everybody's free to make their own choice but i feel like i want to be a warrior i feel like from where i came from from where my soul is from where my heart needs to be i want to battle i, I gotta have something to battle I, i'm battling my own economic situation here yep. at home and i'm dominating it honestly yeah. i'm dominating i'm killing it i know what i'm doing i'm smart i'm intelligent and but that wasn't my passion my passion was music yep and uh yeah we're gonna i mean it's gonna be about war and i mean yeah it's gonna be crazy when would you when would you like to see this new music out uh, we w we would love to see a new album by december 21st on the next winter solstice it's like yeah we're gonna just keep that theme going we that's, oh, yeah. when, that's when that came out so, so there's no like, rush not, because i yeah. mean that gives us enough time we, yeah we, obviously you know I mean? we like symbols um the winter solstice is beautiful it's a great opportunity that's to his birthday yeah too, so. besides that you know it's also when the you know it's a signifying part of our astral place in, sure. in time you know uh we chose the 16th I, when i was looking for the dates man i, I picked it specifically because it was the only date that had a full black moon. Mm. I either wanted a full black moon or I wanted a full moon because that's the only way Bruca can really come out. I was preferring the full black, and we got it lined up perfect just oh, wow. for us. Again, we like it being a, like a deity. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're talking about that. That's I mean, so I, I like to, at, we have fun with it. Yeah, you know I like I mean? to draw inspir uh, John Netsvit, huge inspiration. Uh, I like to draw inspiration from things like that. Uh, he he had the Vernum Greenmore. 
I use that in combination with my guitar Grimoire and my guitar encyclopedia to just take these chords to places that I never imagined they could go. Sometimes it doesn't work, but that's okay. You're going to try a hundred different things till you find that one right. that speaks to you right. that you know is going to work. Yeah. And it's, you know, one of the things too, and I and want to give you guys a lot of props is that, you know, um, I'm not the only one loving this EP and really sees good things for Bruca. I mean, you guys have been getting a lot of press and, you know, you, you were telling me earlier, you, Rob, we've done some interviews and, uh, it seems like, you know, uh, in a very short while that the name Bruca and this EP has really circulated and, and done well for you guys so far. It was overwhelming, the response that we've got. It's, yeah. It's the biggest fuel. Honestly, it's, it's actually, it's, it's super, I mean, it's nice, man. It's, it's yeah. really nice. There's, I mean, there's, we have fans, gosh, in, in Russia now that are going crazy for us. And I, we're better, loving it. Yeah, Mexico, you know, like everywhere. It's it's kind of crazy, right? Right? You can tell them a bunch of other places. Oh, man, where yeah. Where the CDs are selling online like crazy, digital downloads like crazy. Yeah. Uh, we never asked for a penny. We You could do donate whatever you want to. A lot of people donating $6.66. <laughs> I got, I got cool. sales all over the world. Uh, we have Mexico City, yeah. Yeah. Portugal, yeah. Brazil, <laughs> Chile, Germany. Yeah. Uh, France, Italy, they're wow. going to Russia, lots of places in Russia. Russia, Russia's eating us up. I fucking love Russia, man. Wow. There, there was this. Um, I don't hear people talk about Russia very often. You know what? Such an amazing scene. Wow. And uh, he came back from Russia before we recorded um, Emil, our bassist, and he uh, he brought me a bunch of cassettes, and I love it. I'm a huge collector. <laughs> So um, it's awesome, man. This this girl from Russia, the, this woman the, the other day posted a video of her pole dancing to our music. Wow! And it was it was fucking cool. <laughs> it was amazing. You know, wow! Yeah, we, we fucking respect. Like we love you guys. You know. Like, was it what? Was it rotting lust? That yeah, she was I believe. Yeah. Of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what would you pole yeah. Exactly. Rotting pole lust. Dance to fucking yeah. Gentlemen, that is fucking awesome. I'm so happy uh, that you guys are doing well. I'm happy that. We had an, uh, an opportunity to interview early in the year right now so that hopefully when your new stuff comes out later this year, we can reconnect. Um, I think we've covered all the bases. Is, is there any last words or anything that I missed that you'd like to share with the people out there watching this interview tonight? Do we have any shout outs? Do we already do all of our shout outs pretty mm -hmm. much? Yeah, we do. I think I already said a shout out to Curb and, and everyone that has helped to help us make this. Um, you yeah. know, and just thanks guys. Thanks for fucking um, listening to us, you know? Yeah. And uh, thanks for supporting us. Yep. What about and, you? Uh, uh, we're not going anywhere. What about you, Rosar? I'm probably going to regret this, but, I mean, I want to thank my blood seer. Without her, you know, she's a driving force for me. I mean, you got to have your own way of doing things. And, right. But, uh, yeah, I want to thank Luna. All right. And, then, uh, I mean, that's pretty much it. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you this. Uh there's three tracks right there. If you know how to navigate the internet, we did play a show and it wasn't three songs. We, we played more than three songs. We gave away a lot of the content that's coming out. And if you know how to navigate, it is out mm. there already. All right. And I can tell you Plague Tempest. Oh man, if you find it, it's beautiful. It came out so good. We actually so played the promise yeah. live too. We and, played uh, the promise. That's going to be the single. You know what? A lot single. of that might change too because we're going to. I mean, honestly, it may it's evolve not, a little yeah, bit. It, it may evolve. They're not done yet. Forever yeah. vile. I mean, that evolved so much. One of those songs. It, it took. You know, it evolved throughout a year. So I mean, you know, it's it's just going to get more. We're just going to keep being more brutal. We're going to try to be more black. You know, and uh, yeah. Cool, gentlemen. It's been my pleasure to have you on our program this evening. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, everyone out there, remember, the band is called Bruca. They are from Austin. Their brand new demo EP is out there on the scene. As you heard the man say, even some hidden jams are out there. And I'm going to fucking look for them later on tonight. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Remember, you saw the band only right here on Rob's Metal Works.